Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm testing the new Eminence N314X compression driver, which features uh, a recent material development. The text stream diaphragm has been, uh, we start to see this being used on a number of different compression drivers from various manufacturers. Um, I had recently been getting a few emails requesting that I review this compression driver. And so in this video, I'm going to do a full test on acoustical measurements as well as my listening impressions um, and how it performs on the ES600 by radial horn. Um, I should mention too that uh, test bench, um, the Audio Express te test bench did a full review as well, so check out that link. Um, we can see from their result, well, they go through kind of an expose on the technology. Um, so if you want to understand more about the text stream material, uh, they dive into that a little bit. Um, I was comparing my results to theirs, and it looks like um, I'm getting very similar results as uh, them. Uh, they had the horn mounted uh, to an eminence horn, um, but for this test, it's going to be mounted to a similar size horn, uh, but it's a biradial, so it's going to probably provide a little more loading in the upper treble. Okay, so uh, here you see it here. Um, this is one of the uh, kind of uh, pre-finished biradial horns in my shop, which I mounted the driver to. Um, so you can just see it at the back there. I did some close-up photos of the text stream material just out of curiosity's sake to see what it looked like. You can see it here. Now, um, Eminence, this particular driver, doesn't have copper shorting rings and it looks like the phase plug has been uh, turned on a lathe uh, to keep the dome shape accurate along with a, uh, looks like a, a a polymer type material for the phase plug itself. So it's uh, what I normally see here, uh, like with the RCF products and other Italian brands, is they have a aluminum uh, cast phase plug that's been sintered together or brazed together. So we're seeing kind of more crude, a little more crude uh, manufacturing techniques with this particular driver. Also, um, zooming in on the uh, diaphragm itself, you can see that there's a kind of a concerning level of glue um, applied to the surround where it meets the diaphragm. Uh, but they do use perforations in the surround, which is nice to see. Uh, some of the RCF drivers use that. Um, so, yeah, so let's uh, get right into it as far as the uh, test data and uh, see how it does. So now I started out with the impedance sweep. So we do see the FS centered at around 400 uh, and 64 hertz and then we see some irregularities uh, through its pass band and then we see some mild breakup in the uh, starting in the 5k region um, so if we go to the frequency response here I'm just going to try to balance this out see it's to the left of my screen so here's the uh, response on the ES600 horn. So it has uh, a, a relatively linear response uh, up to around 8 kilohertz, where we have these sharp uh, peaks centered at around um, 7 and 9 kilohertz. And so they're not too, too severe, um, plus or minus 3 dB in that region. And then instead of the usual diaphragm breakup that we see with other compression drivers, we see a uh, five, minus 5 dB shelf. Uh, but the treble continues to extend up to around 18 kilohertz, but it's down uh, quite significantly at around minus 13 dB. Now we do see breakup occurring eventually in the diaphragm, but it's quite high um, there at around 23 kilohertz. So um, normally we would see peaks in the breakup uh, I've seen upwards of a 20 dB peak occurring when that uh, diaphragm starts to break up uh, with when the material is aluminum or titanium. Uh, those uh, materials typically don't have very high damping factors for the material itself. And so what we're seeing here is uh, good, good dampening characteristics uh, for this texture material. So looking at the burst decay, um, we can see that we have um, a little more resonance than we'd like to see. Um, normally I like to see things kept at bay within the first eight periods uh, using a 35 dB noise floor, uh, but it extends out a little further. Um, if we look at the uh, CSD plot, we can see almost a reverse null occurring between the two peaks that we saw in the frequency response, which is resulting in a uh, kind of a ringing there, um, I would say at around 8 kilohertz. 
that extends out um, a little bit past one uh, millisecond. So the CSD plot has the, the depth scale changed to milliseconds there. And so whether this is audible or not, um, that's a, a question. I certainly didn't hear uh, resonance characteristics when I was doing my subjective listening evaluation. And so this is likely more just an academic interest as far as the material and how clean the uh, test results are. Um, for interest's sake, I've uh, shown the published data from Eminence, highlighting its excellent uh, time domain performance with clean, fast decay within one millisecond. We are seeing um, our results extend a little bit past that, but otherwise um, we're, we're seeing very similar results, especially with the two peaks at the seven and nine kilohertz. Sorry about that. There's a, a tractor bailing in the field uh, next to me. So um, now I decided to kind of replicate the graph settings that are published with eminence and you'll notice that the depth scale is scaled such that it extends out to six milliseconds um, with my CSD plots it normally goes to 2.68 milliseconds and so I changed the graph settings so that it was kind of an apples to apples comparison here uh, between my results and what eminence has published and so you can see here that's what this uh, looks like when we change the depth scale to what eminence is showing now uh, I decided to take this a little a little bit further Sorry about the screaming there. Um, kids are here in the summertime, so they're bored. Uh, so looking um, at another tweeter that I recently tested, it's the CS Prestige Dome tweeter mounted in one of my uh, horn lenses. You can see here that um, there's a much cleaner result um, if you compare it against the eminence compression driver. Usually dome tweeters are gonna have um, you know, excellent objective test data. Uh, and it's, it's clear here that it's just kind of emphasizes the importance of uh, observing what those scale settings are when comparing uh, drivers and the relative test data. So um, looking at the distortion um, at 85 and 95 dB, we started to look at the harmonic distortion and it's predominantly H2 with the H3 and H4 being into the noise floor of the test system, which is at minus 90 dB. Um, moving up into the higher SPL, uh, we do see a slight rise in H2 in those regions where we've seen some of the uh, time domain uh, resonances, although they were still minor. Uh, looking at IMD, um, we do a multi-band, multi, um, multi-band, multi, can't quite remember exactly what it's called, but um, you can see here it's a 12 band per octave uh, test signal that ranges from 500 up to the 20 kilohertz there. And so it's a good litmus test that really flushes out any potential distortion issues in the driver. And so typically we have lower distortion uh, in the lower mid range and then those modulating uh, products start to show up in, into the mid range and treble uh, from the uh, diaphragm movement in the lower mid-range and so um, it's quite unavoidable uh, to see a rise in IMD in the upper treble but here we see it kept uh, well at bay uh, showing minus 65 dB at the 10 kilohertz. If we increase the test signal to the 95 dB uh, we see the distortion rise in a linear fashion and so um, we're seeing minus 55 dB. Uh, my in-house target is minus 60 um, but uh, it's still uh, very close and acceptable um, for both home audio and pro audio applications. So for my subjective listening, I had uh, set up the uh, some EQ. You can see here I've uh, done a high frequency shelf to bring up the highs to account for what we saw earlier. And so um, this is the resulting frequency response from the EQ settings that were applied. And so um, if you want to uh, check out my original blog link in the description, I've done kind of a, a scaled uh, up to 10 ranking system for the various sound quality attributes. But the uh, general takeaway on this is that the soundstage depth really stood out uh, for me much more so than other diaphragm materials. I've evaluated the tech stream on other compression driver um, brands such as the Lamar M2 field coil and that um, 
had the same kind of uh, soft, smooth sound character that was actually bringing out a lot of soundstage depth and low-level detail retrieval, particularly in the high frequencies. And so this is something kind of like a common denominator that I'm seeing. There's a correlation uh, with this text stream diaphragm material. Um, and so the uh, first initial reaction when listening to the compression driver is that I thought it sounded um, a lot like a soft dome tweeter. It had a, a slightly soft character um, that I found was great for um, you know, poor recordings. It was able to make generally most of my music sound enjoyable, uh, even though it was some of the recordings were poorly recorded. And so that might be uh, something that's important to you. Um, I found that the the softness did have a little bit of a detriment to the dynamic range. So uh, with the snap of the snare drum and, and things like that, it wasn't as dynamic sounding as some of the other diaphragm materials, such as the titanium uh, diaphragm uh, on the on the SB audience compression driver as a comparison. So. So overall, I found the driver to sound quite pleasant and musical uh, with virtually no listening uh, fatigue. Um, so despite the driver showing some anomalies in the upper treble, I found that the soundstage depth was excellent across its bandwidth. Um, and the, the driver was able to fully render acoustic guitar, banjo, and the ukulele correctly. Um, even the high treble instruments such as the maraca and the tambourine, it came through uh, convincingly accurate uh, despite the soft sound character that I mentioned. So, um, so overall, the uh, Eminence and 314X seems to be an all a good all-around performer uh, in terms of balancing out all the parameters and providing an enjoyable and uh, home listening experience. So, um, yeah. So um, that's it for today. Take care and have a great day.